Okay, so you've just seen the text tracking. Um, but before I do anything, I just want to say that um, any anything I do here will not be actually the best it can be because I've only got a short amount of time. Whereas when you do it, um, you need to take much longer and make it much better, get the fine details which will make it the best it can be because in this short amount of time, I won't be able to um, do it very well. Um, but yeah, anyway, first you want to get your uh, your background ready. So anything you, that you're putting the text onto, basically, um, and then you want to um, get the first bit of text that you want to um, track. So here it is. Um, obviously, it needs to be on top of the uh, on top of the background. So here it is. Here's the text. Obviously, you get it by going to um, here, media generators, text, and you can type in what you want. But that doesn't matter. That's not what this is about. You then want to start it where you want to start it. Obviously. Um, I'm going to put the fade in the same and then end it in this example it, it doesn't end when the next piece comes in because you, can st you would still be able to see it if it was there so you need to keep on going until kind of here where there is you wouldn't be able to see it anymore so I'm going to get the start of it actually to start off with we will keep that like that. So, you want to position it where you want it to start off with, for example here will be just fine. Then you want to make sure that this layer of, of, of on your timeline is converted to 3D. So you need to go up here to where it says compositing mode, click it, 3D source al alpha, and that will change it into 3D. When that's done, you want to um, come over to this motion tracking button, click it, and here you'll be able to manipulate uh, the text and make it do cool stuff so um, yeah you want to make sure it's at the start first of all so here here's the start you can add a keyframe whatever this is the start keyframe so that's where you are that's how it's starting and then one thing you need to keep in mind is that anything that's closer to where you're viewing it from so where the camera would be moves faster if you're going sideways than it would in the background so you can't line up your text with for example this circle here because this circle moves only a small amount in comparison to say this bin here which is more in the foreground and will move a lot more so you need to line it up with something that's um, in the foreground and and it's kind of in your face so it needs to move a lot more than most of the stuff on the screen so as you move on basically this for example this little bit here is quite in the foreground I mean it's not as much as this text would be so the text is going to move slightly more than that but we can use that as guideline so it's roughly kind of in between the N and the G. So as we move on we can move our text and we can select here prevent movement of different axes. So we want to move on the X axis so we will stop movement of the, um, the Y and the Z so we can't move up and down we can only move it sideways. And then we want to move our text so in between the N and the G is this little marker we had before it's roughly about there but as I said before you're going to have to take more time to do it but it's more in the foreground so we'll move it just a little bit more let's say there for example um, and hopefully it's roughly this is rough moves with the environment which it does now this last keyframe isn't actually where the text would end we need to end it about there. 
So, from, from there, I don't know how much it'll move. Uh, let's do it about there. Just like that. There you go. Hopefully that should be roughly okay. It's not. It's delete. Oh, crap. Where are we? Sorry. Right. We need to delete this one. So that. Hopefully, flipping it. moves roughly with it. It's a bit mucked up at the end but you can work and change that. It just needs to be moved slightly quicker. That's all. Like that. We'll play it just to see what it looks like. So that's alright. It's not bad. You can tweak it. And another thing that I did was um, I can't remember. What did I do? Oh yeah, I s I changed from here to here just slightly the angle on uh, here just a little bit, just like that, because I don't know it just adds to it just slightly, but that's up to you. Um, anyway. The next piece of text, again you can just grab it here, we need to do the same thing, make it a 3D layer, bring it on top, uh, we'll need to start it about there where the wall, where you can just see the wall. So first of all I'm going to track motion and I'm going to make it just slightly smaller. Make sure you have this on. Um, no, this one lock aspect ratio so that when you move it, it doesn't kind of muck it up. Make it smaller like that. And first of all, we want to move it so it appears like it's not there. And we need to move it slightly up. Well, too much, too much. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say again, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of patience trying to get it perfect. So that's not perfect. But as we move along, you can kind of drag it against the wall. Like that. That's clearly not perfect. But as you can see on this one, it's a lot smaller. It sticks to the wall. And if you if we go into it, you can see how many keyframes that I've done to try and make it look like it's actually in the environment. So this is kind of just telling you uh, what to do and then you can go and do it and make it perfect for yourself. So yeah, it's not perfect, clearly. The other one's not bad. So yeah, that is how you track motion the text and make it look like it's in the environment so hopefully it helped a bit and you can use it and uh, create create a good good effect so yeah see you next time